Defeats on FM are like buses. We go 16 games unbeaten without one, and then we get two in a row. What is up guys, Matthew here and welcome back to another episode of our FM24 Road to Glory save with Darlington. A big thank you for all the support thus far as always and we are back here today with two games in the league. We've only played two games since we were last here and as I mentioned, we lost them both. We've waited all season or at least since we come in when we managed the Farsley game. We had the one defeat in the FA Trophy, but since then we'd not lost in the league and we'd gone 16 league games unbeaten. And out of nothing, we have went and lost two in a row. And this one was horrible, the first one to Brackley, because Brackley, going into the game against us, had lost five on the bounce. They'd lost six in their last seven. They've since went and lost again, but it happens to be in typical FM fashion against us, they win 1-0. And we were the better side for the majority. We missed a penalty in the eighth minute, dominated for most of the first half, had the by far the, the better of the XG um, and Brackley go and catch us with a goal in the second half. And uh, yeah, with one of their only two shots on goal and their only highlight, their one and only highlight, they score. We hit the bar, we had one off the line. It was one of them FM games where you sat there just thinking, this game is scripted to just go against me. And it was obviously against the team who were playing so poorly that uh, inflicted our first defeat. And it was followed up by exactly the same game again at home to Alfreton another team who were below us another team who were out of form another team we out xg even more so an xg of two they had an xg of 0.6 and with one of their only highlights they score their only goal and I tell you what the chances we had in this game we had literally chances on the four yard line with an open goal that was blocked the keeper was saving shots left, right and centre. And we've had two back-to-back 1-0 defeats. And I, they're both just inexplainable, if I'm brutally honest. And I honestly was starting to wonder if the FM gods had just decided to turn against me. Honestly, ridiculous. And not only have we then lost to two teams who were below us at the time, I think the teams around us have picked up because we went from being a mid-table team maybe dreaming of a late playoff push, we're right back in with the fight now. We are only two points clear of the drop. I don't know what's going on underneath us, but it, they, the teams below us must have come into form because that gap has gotten very, very small very, very quickly. And suddenly we're now only two points clear of the drop and the playoffs are 11 points away. So we need to forget about the playoffs. We need to ensure we stay clear of a relegation battle and we don't get sucked in to the very the very problem that we seemingly escaped in the first place. And that just shows how big of a job this is. The fact that we have gone 16 games unbeaten and we find ourselves you know, just outside the relegation zone after just two narrow defeats. So a big period of games coming, still plenty of time to go. But I think it is safe to say now, playoffs, forget it. We need to focus on staying up in this division this season and then next season we can have a fresh look and uh, a fresh outlook on, on, on the season and what we can maybe do from here on in. But um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a worrying time where I'm getting a little bit nervous, I'm not going to lie. Today we have South Shields in a game we of course said we would play. That's a local derby and they're third in the league and they've been playing pretty well that's going to be a tough game and then we play Boston who are in and around us in the league so yeah suddenly we're looking over our shoulders once again and I dare say another defeat or two in this episode we're going to be right bang in trouble so here's the team away to South Shield. Tommy Taylor is in goal. We've got a back four of Ben Headley. Jake Taylor is going to come in for Toby Lees, whose form's dropped off a little bit of late with Jasim Sukar. We've got Jordan Musto on the left, one of the very few players who's remained in decent form of late. 
Ben Little, his form's dropped off a little bit. He's going to be partnered by Tom Platt, who comes in for Will Hatfield, who again, his form has dropped off. Connor Douglas, who of course we signed, has come in. He's not done much as yet, but he is young, so we can't expect too much. But he's still starting for the injured Jarrett Rivers, who still is yet to get back from training. Johnny Ngandu is in at the 10. He's picked up a little bit of late. It's safe to say the signings we've brought in haven't done well at all. Tom Elliott hasn't made a claim to start yet at all with Harry Green in there. And Andrew Nelson is going to remain in there. Our top goal scorer, Max Thompson, a guy we brought in with high hopes. He's been dreadful so far and his morale has dropped. I really don't know what has happened here with him, but he should be performing a lot better than he is. Despite us going away from home, I am tempted to stick with positive as I always like to play positive, but for one of a very few occasions, I am going to drop us back to balanced because unlike a couple of episodes ago, or what felt like one episode ago, we were mid-table, nothing to lose, felt like we could go out, play expressive, play our football, not have to look behind us, we don't have the pressure of having to get playoffs. And then out of the blue, we're now looking right over our shoulders again and we're under pressure a little bit. So I am going to just get us back to being balanced and hopefully we pick up a point here because <laughs> literally a few episodes back when we were nil-nilling it and I was saying I'm sick of us drawing nil-nil, I'd just snap your hand off for a nil-nil here, um, if I'm honest. Because, yeah, we've conceded the odd goal and we've stopped scoring. So this this could be a bit of a drab game if we if our attacking form is anything to go by. But South Shields promoted, doing well. And, uh, yeah, it's a local derby as well. So the last thing we want to do is upset the fans by losing this one. So it is, as you'd expect, as I always expect when we play balanced, it's a pretty quiet game. But here come South Shields. On the right-hand side, Lowe plays it back to Solomon Smith. They're playing the ball around very, very nicely. Here's Robertson. Puts a very good cross into the box and Martin heads it over. According to the commentary, that was a bit of a sitter, so we might have got away with one there. But uh, you can see how high they're pressing us as we are playing out from the back. Taylor now to Lawler, into Little, who picks up a good pocket of space. This is making me so nervous when we're playing it out like this. I'm just waiting for someone to play the wrong pass, or we'll overhit a pass, or maybe it's going to be the start of something special, or maybe Platt is going to throw our style of play out the window and just hoof it even though they are trained to keep the ball and play through the lines. Why he's just hoofed it, I don't know. But that's so frustrating. When we've got the ball, where we want it, we want to keep the ball. That's what we're all about. And you're just handing it back to the opposition. But anyway, we've not been punished for it as yet. Anyway, Musto now plays it down the left to Harry Green, who crosses it in, and Andrew Nelson scores! And that's a relief because the last two games, we've had so many chances. We've missed penalties, we've missed sitters, we've missed tap-ins. It's just nice to see the ball hit the back of the opposition net. Great work down the left. Harry Green crosses it in to Andrew Nelson, who puts it as far into the top bin as he probably could. And that's a relief. Very good stuff from the boys there to get themselves in front in this game. And it gives us something to hold on to. And, you know, maybe we have to start looking back to going balanced. You know, the honeymoon period was always going to end. Here's Nelson again, by the way. And Gandu's be brought down. And that is a penalty. This is a huge moment. We missed a penalty two games ago and we lost the game. Ben Little, he can't miss another, surely. And he has. It's been saved again. We're going to have to take him off penalties. He's missed two in a row. I I don't believe it. Between my two career modes, I've had four penalties in the last few games. We've missed every single one of them. It's ridiculous. But we seem to be coming straight back at us in Ngandu with one of the weakest finishes I think I've ever seen. He got all the way into the penalty area and then just passed it into the goalkeeper's arms. I mean, are we going to regret that penalty miss? Is he our best penalty taker? I mean, he is, but... Oh, Jacob Hazel's not even on the pitch. I might, to be fair, stick 
Andrew Nelson on penalties. I just can't really comprehend how Ben Little has missed two penalties in a row. Both saved, so it's not like he's missed the target or anything, but still. Let me see if I can... Uh, yeah, tempo's short. We'll increase the tempo, but the passing is short, so we shouldn't be hoofing it. Here's Nelson, though, who seems to be having a much better game than he has of late. Out to Headley. Little lovely football. Douglas is in. The 18-year-old youth prospect is in. And he's put the ball in the bottom corner. Douglas, who has took a bit of time to adapt, understandably, as an 18-year-old, has got his first goal. This was great from Headley and Little. He might not be putting the penalties away, but that was a beautiful pass inside. And Douglas puts it in the back of the net. We are going to proceed with the tactical changes we made. But that is fantastic. And I, I don't know where this has come from. Well, I do, because in the last two games, we've we've created enough. We've just not been putting the ball in the back of the net. At least today, the ball has been hitting the back of the net. And our attacking players are having a pretty good game. By the most part, I'm going to increase the match speed between highlights. It is a bit slow. But so far, so good. And if we can get to half-time 2-0 up against South Shields, I was going to say they've not had a shot on target. They just have. But overall, it looks like we've kept their attacking players out. And we've got to half-time 2-0 up. And we've restricted them pretty much to scraps. They had the one sitter earlier in the game. So that's a very good half of football from us there. And, uh, I, yeah, well done on... Have we controlled possession? I don't know if we've controlled possession, but it looks like we've had relative control. Keep it up. That's all I'm going to say. Keep it simple. Keep it up. And I'm going to change this around as well. League table, latest scores. There we go. That's better. But we just need to maintain what we're doing. Keep things as they are, and it will edge us four points adrift, or four points clear, of the drop, 10 points to the playoffs, but like I say, let's forget about that. As much as I tell myself to forget about it, <laughs> I still can't forget about it, but that's not the goal at the end of the day. We have to steer clear of the bottom three. And it looks like we are in relative control here. Heading into the final 20 minutes. The boys look relatively fit. I don't know if playing balanced has preserved a little bit of fitness but they all seem pretty well conditioned at the moment, which is good to see. Um, I might bring Jacob Hazel on soon. I'm going to send a message to Max Thompson and say, you've not been good enough. And we're probably going to play Jacob Hazel, who of course has not been in the fold. Had a massive bust up with us. Because of course we transfer listed him being the vice captain and it had a really bad impact on the dressing room so I'm going to bring on Jacob Hazel the fans have been wanting to see him and here he is and if he got a goal that would be a really nice moment Headley into Hazel back to Ben Little who tries to bend one into the corner and it had the keeper concerned but it was over and wide oh and this could make things nervy South Shields with a corner it's whipped in Taylor though comes and claims brilliantly that's what you want from your goalkeeper. We'll slow tempo down a little bit. But that's what you want from your goalkeeper. He, of course... Why is he booting it up? Why is he hoofing it? We don't want to hoof it. I was just going to say, he, of course, completely dropped one from a corner not too long ago. But it might be completely pointless because here comes South Shields again. He booted it clear, handed the ball back to the opposition. And again, that's not what we want. It's a good ball in to Motley Henry here. Square to Martin. And that all come from us giving the ball needlessly away. Booting it up the pitch when we had options. Stupid from the goalkeeper, really. And now all of a sudden, a relatively comfortable game is looking a little bit nervy. Let's drop the wing backs to support. And I probably, I'm probably going to drop us to a back five. I'm not even going to waste time to do it. Johnny Ngandu, he's going to come off. We're going to drop three centre-backs in the heart of defence. And I might even get both full-backs to defend as well, if I'm honest. And we'll go cautious. 
I'm not going to take any chances. We need a win. We're going to try and get it by any means necessary. We're not in the place earlier in the season where we were able to cruise. Oh, God. This would be typical of our form of late. It's a good header back to Taylor. Taylor, please, please keep the ball. Please keep it down. Passing much shorter. Just keep the ball. Do not. You've got options. Thankfully, he rolls it out this time. Why he didn't do that before, I have no idea. Here's Douglas. Takes off down the right. Good run. Little, can he play it back to Douglas? He plays it into Platt, who plays it to Harry Green, and well, I don't know what that was. He's, was he caught in two minds? Did he shoot and cross? I don't know what that was. But that was a chance to seal it. But we win the header from the goal kick. Douglas to Headley. God, I would welcome a third goal so much. It would be huge for us if we could get it. Headley though, well, I don't know why he's played that long. Again, we've asked him to keep the ball very short. And I don't know why he's played such a high-risk ball into an area where he was never ever going to find his man. And now Smith, I've got a horrible feeling it's going to be 2-2. Oh, Douglas, that's fantastic covering. Brilliant from the 18-year-old there. Coming back to help his defence. He's had a great game. I'm surprised the rating hasn't... Oh, I say that he's lost the ball. Why did I say he's had a good game? Here we go. Here we go. Incoming. Yeah. I just knew it. It's written in the stars. It was coming from a mile off. Now they're all very anxious. I mean, what do you do? You know, you either opt to hang on to a lead and go defensive or you keep things as is and and then, you know, all of a sudden you, you might concede because you're not sitting back and defending your lead. And we've got a highlight instantly from kickoff here and this, this is absolutely, I mean, this is so nervy. My God, here is Douglas who lost the ball. There's me. Oh, he's lost it again. I don't know what the point of that highlight was. I said I'd take a point. And I think we're going to get one. And I'm I'm going to take that. It's disappointing we've lost it from a winning position conceding two late goals. Um Yeah, we didn't get the result we wanted, but you created enough chances to win. I think that's more than fair. Um but, you know, them two points dropped could be massive because results again. The teams below us are picking up points at the moment and the gap to the bottom three is now two points. It's closed by one. Even in stoppage time there, the gap was four. So I don't know what's happened, who's won and where, but... Oh, two points clear. We'd have been four with a win. Maybe that's what happened. But... Uh, yeah, no win in five now. It's got 16 matches unbeaten. Now we've went no win in five. And uh, we've only won three since the turn of the year. If you want to look at it like that, with the two draws in December, of course. Four wins since the end of November. But anyway, we'll move on. We've got Boston United away, which is a game that is winnable. And uh, I feel like it needs to be winnable because, I mean, Boston, Buxton and Banbury coming up. Big games before we, of course, come back for Spenny Moore and Blythe. It's just getting a little bit nervy at the moment, so it was a good point away to a good team. This, though, is a game I would like to see us win. So here's the team then for the game away at Boston United. The back four is as is. We've got Toby Lees, who's come back in, I believe, from Jake Lawler. He's alongside Jasim Sukara. It might have been Sukar who's come in for Jake Lawler, but... Again, we're just trying to find a pairing that can just build that chemistry and stop the goals going in. Musto and Headley remain on both fullbacks. Little and Hatfield both start as they normally do. We are going to bring Little and Hatfield back together for this one. Douglas will remain on the right hand side as Jarrett Rivers still isn't quite ready to come back in, but he did well in the last game. Johnny Ngandu will keep his place just because Tom Elliott's morale is really low at the moment, and I'm not too sure why. We might have to speak with him about that one. Harry Green had a good game, though. He's on the left. Andrew Nelson keeps his place as he did score 
of course, last time out. And uh, Jacob Hazel has been back in asking to play more. And because we've already upset him enough this season, I did say you can have more playing time. And the reason why is because, well, both of the strikers at the moment who should be playing a lot better, probably more so Max Thompson, aren't. So, yeah, that's that's a reason why. But, um, oh, wow, Boston are 24th in the form table. We're bottom. We are bottom of the form table. I mean, I didn't know that. Um, that's bad. That's pretty bad. But Boston United have lost their last three. So it's safe to say you are looking at two sides who are desperate for a win. And this was exactly the same position we were in when we played Brackley. And despite battering them, we ended up losing. So I'm a little bit worried that could happen again. But I mean, we, we could theoretically end in the relegation zone, which is insane, really, given where we where we were. Um, yeah, crazy to think that that's where we could end up. But obviously a win and that takes us up to where Boston are. And, and you know, they're a little bit more comfortable. So big game, very big game. Musto wins the header, but it is picked up by a Boston United midfielder. Here they play it in field. Press them back to the centre backs, but they play it back into midfield. Adamson now to Thorndike, who takes a shot from range. That was never really troubling the goalkeeper. First chance of the game. It just, just feels like teams around us are picking up points. I mean, look at that. Now the gap is only one point to the bottom three. Is it Kings Lynn who've picked up a point? Oh, yeah, they're winning. So it's just so tight. It's so tight, and it it could go all the way. This this fight to keep Dalton up, we took them over. We were ten ten points adrift, of course. We took on the challenge of keeping them up. Boston are playing well; they're creating so many chances. Um, and yeah, obviously, if they get relegated, we're sacked because <laughs> there's no lower league than this, and it would be a shame for our journey to end early. But um, yeah, it's it, it could it could at this point despite it looking like we were cruising away from the drop and we were only going up, it suddenly changed. And uh, Boston, a team who've lost three in a row, don't look like a team who've lost three in a row. Let me tell you, they've created enough chances in this game. Musto does well to win the ball. Harry Green, ball in behind. Andrew Nelson's in! And he's been tackled. Last gasp. Because, of course, he has. And now we're only outside the bottom uh, the bottom four on goal difference. The gap is just closing in. Every single game. Oh, dear. But we are coming to the end of the first half. It's been a very quiet, low-key half. We've got the higher XG, but they've created the more chances. Oh, and now they've got a corner. In swinger to the back post, and it's in. Leak with the header. Little missed his header. And all of a sudden, things are looking bleak. We are in to the bottom three, or bottom four. Once that's it, and there it is. Wow. Dig in. Everybody needs to dig in. And there's no reaction from the boys at all. We're in trouble. We're officially in trouble. Performances have fell off a cliff. We're going to demand more. Oh dear, now they've got to throw in. This could be it. Headed clear. Musto does get out, thankfully, but Atkinson, Adamson sorry, is free at the back post with a free header. Arguably, he should do better from there. But, uh, yeah, with the squad we have, we, we've, we've known since we come in we should be playing a lot better than what we are. But we've dropped right back into old habits, it seems. We need a goal. Douglas. Ops to keep hold of it, plays it to Headley, Douglas gets it back, back post to Ngandu, how's he missed? That's what's been happening. Every game, the two games we lost 1-0, that's what's been happening. 
It's like it's scripted for the game to go against us. And Gandu's coming off. We're going to go two up top. I mean, we just need a goal. We need a point. We need to just keep clawing and scratching our way out of this bottom four. I can't believe we're back in it. I would never have foreseen that happening in a million years. Ben Little, who was at one point one of our best players, has been off form. We'll swap him out for Platt. We're going to have to go attacking as well. This is such a big half an hour. It really is. There's nerves, there's anxiety. And it's arguably at the worst time that this could happen. We need the likes of Thompson to step up. He's been brought in, he's on big money. He was, you know, he promised us big things coming from Sunderland. It's just not happening. It's not happening out there at the moment. Um, I'm going to take a sitting midfielder off for another striker. And we're going to stick Hazel up front. He wants to play more. He's asked to be involved more. Here we go then. You're going in the middle of a front three, my friend. Very attacking. Three up top. Going for it. Absolutely going for it. Centralise Tom Platt a bit more. I mean, this is a team who've lost three in a row, for crying out loud. We were beaten by Brackley, who'd lost five in a row. Oh, here we go. What a save. What a save. Musto's misjudgment. It was a mistake defensively once again. We're going to demand more. As we've not created enough. Only two shots on target. Despite us going very attacking, we're not creating anything. And I think we might be about to be punished. Oh, Taylor, I mean, that looked sketchy, didn't it? But he saved it. I mean, the momentum's been... I mean, this is, I, this is a side who are in such dire form. But so are we. Woods, who's going to take his time with this back post... Platt absolutely hoys it clear, but it's coming back. Thompson's nicked it. Play him in. The ball's rubbish. Douglas gets the ball. It's over the top to absolutely nobody. How have we bottled a, such a great attacking position? So frustrating. Headley in behind. Thompson's been brought down. Oh, it's a penalty. Right, Little's not on it, is he? He's not even on the pitch. Like I said, we have missed our last four penalties across both career modes. If we miss another, then there's just something weird going on. Jacob Hazel. Someone tell me this game isn't scripted, please. Someone tell me that this game isn't scripted. Because what is happening right now is inexplainable. We've lost three of our last four in games we dominated, had higher XG, missed penalties, missed sitters. It just couldn't be, it couldn't be going more against us if we tried. And I'm saying the same thing again. Disappointing we didn't win because of the chances we created. It's exactly the same every game right now. And we're in the drop zone again. Can you believe it? We are in the drop zone once again after seemingly being clear of it. And I mean, Peterborough Sports are on 41. I mean, it is so tight. We could be in like an eight team battle. Fans are criticizing our tactics. I'm gonna have to hold a team meeting. Club atmosphere is poor, managerial support is poor. Um, we're good enough to turn things around. They've not even reacted. I think we've lost the dressing room. 
I genuinely think we've lost the dressing room. I mean, Thompson has been... I'm going to try and convince him. Try to pick yourself up. That's at least got a positive reaction. I can't believe how quickly things have gone wrong here at Darlington when they were seemingly going so well. We're still only one point clear. Uh, our goal difference is significantly better than the teams around us, so that's a point in itself. But um, this is a huge, huge end of the season. Winless in six. Buxton, Banbury coming up. Banbury is more of a tough game. They're higher than the league than I thought, but Buxton right above us, just outside of it. We could drag another team into this battle with a win there. So I'm going to go off and I'll play Buxton and Banbury. We'll be back for two more Northeast Derby games against Spennymoor and Blythe. And you look at some of the games we've got left. Peterborough Sports, they're in the mix with us. Rushall are bottom of the league. Warrington are in the battle. Farsley are in the battle. So there are games in there which you could say are in our hands, but we have gone from being clear, loving life, looking ahead to the future to now possibly facing a dressing room who we've lost confidence of relegation and losing our first job but other than that guys if you've enjoyed this video do hit the like button do subscribe for more and comment below your thoughts and we'll be back in the next one which i mean if we lose two more games i don't know what might happen by that point but things are not looking good with the dressing room they're not looking good with the fans and we could be in for a serious, serious relegation battle in the final few games of the season. But until then, have a good day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.